Anger physically changes your body. Most people think it is just an emotion, something that erupts and then disappears once a moment passes. But every time anger rises, your body reacts in ways you may not notice. Your heartbeat shifts, your breathing changes, and parts of your mind that help you stay rational begin to shut down. Anger feels like he lives in the moment, but its effect continues long after the feeling fades. And over time, it begins to shape your health, your thinking, and even the way your body works. In the 18th century, there lived a surgeon who was one of the most celebrated physicians of his time. John Hunter was a man who labored through long, demanding hours and slept barely five hours a night. He was a classic Taipei personality. People admired his skill and success, but more than anything, they feared his temper. And strangely, John himself feared it too. He once said that his life was literally in the hands of any person who chose to annoy or tease him. To others, it might have sounded like an exaggeration, but for him, it reflected something real. After moments of anger, his chest would tighten up and he would feel sharp pains in his body. And although he knew anger made him suffer, he kept moving on as if nothing was happening. Then in October 16, 1793, the 65-year-old, who was usually very punctual and extremely particular about time, arrived late to a hospital board meeting. That was unusual for him. As the meeting went on, a colleague contradicted him. It wasn't a big confrontation, but for someone who lived with constant impatience and pressure, moments like that always stirred something inside him. He tried to keep his reaction under control. He stepped into the next room, and a moment later, he let out a deep groan and collapsed. His heart had stopped. The anger he carried for years had finally revealed its cost. The reason John had to face that tragedy is that a lot more goes on inside of us during moments of rage than meets the eye. You might think that anger is natural and that once it goes away, the body goes back to normal. But it's not that simple. Between 2013 and 2017, researchers at Columbia University set out to understand how anger affects the body, particularly blood vessels, and the inner lining called the endothelium. This is a thin layer of cells in the inside of every blood vessel, and it's responsible for helping them contract and relax. This movement of contraction and dilation is crucial for maintaining healthy blood flow throughout the body. So, to study this, researchers worked with healthy young adults and divided them into four groups. One group was asked to recall personal memories that made them angry. Another group focused on moments that made them feel anxious. A third group read texts meant to make them sad. And the neutral group simply counted from 1 to 100. And what they found was clear. Even brief moments of anger delayed endothelial relaxation. And it was an asymmetrical relationship. Just eight minutes of anger reduced the blood vessel's ability to relax for up to 40 minutes. Anxiety didn't do this. Sadness didn't do this. Only anger did. And research shows that when moments like this repeat over months or years, the strain adds up as the vessels are continually constricted. It becomes the starting point of atherosclerosis, where plaque begins to form in the arteries. Blood flow becomes restricted. The heart works harder and eventually severe cardiovascular disease develops. Anger doesn't just target the heart, it also affects your brain and behavior. The word anger comes from Old Norse and it means sorrow or grief. And rage, the extreme expression of anger, meant foolhardiness or insanity. The ancient Stoic philosopher Seneca viewed anger as a form of madness, a force that weakens rational thought and pushes a person away from clear judgments. Maybe there was truth to this. Take a look at these two parts of the brain. The one on the left is the amygdala. This is a part that reacts first when something feels threatening. It triggers fast emotional responses and prepares the body to act before you have time to think. And this here is the prefrontal cortex. 
This is where rational thinking happens. It helps you stay calm, make decisions, and weigh consequences. Now, what do you think happens in these regions when you get angry? The amygdala goes haywire, and the prefrontal cortex goes offline. As this happens, blood flow moves away from the regions that support judgment and problem solving. So the ability to think shrinks, consequences feel distant, and reactions become sharp and impulsive. And research over the years has shown that anger makes people more likely to ruminate, react aggressively, and view situations in self-centered ways. It also affects moral judgment, increasing the urge to punish or retaliate when someone feels wronged. And as most of us should know, anger also harms the receiver. And tragically, this applies especially to children. Research shows that even harmless verbal anger can alter children's developing brains, creating neural changes comparable to physical or sexual abuse. Anger may not just be an emotion or a reaction, but maybe more like a kind of energy. Traditional Chinese medicine views anger through a very different lens. It begins with the idea of qi, the natural energy that moves through the body and keeps everything in balance. In traditional Chinese medicine, every emotion is linked to an organ, and anger is believed to be tied to the liver. When anger builds, it disrupts the smooth flow of qi, causing so-called liver qi stagnation. All of this is tied to the Chinese theory of the five elements, which connects emotions, organs, and the natural elements. Anger belongs to the element of wood. It represents growth and movement, but it can also become rigid. A tree that refuses to bend under pressure eventually breaks. In the same way, holding onto anger for too long can make a person feel more inflexible, more reactive, and overwhelmed. If energy stagnation continues in the liver, it can turn into what is known as liver fire. The wood metaphorically catches fire. And when the liver is on fire, the body reacts quickly. How so? Well, blood pressure can rise, you may get headaches, dizziness, eye redness, and even symptoms connected to stroke. And because the liver sits close to the spleen, the stomach, and the gallbladder, an imbalance in the liver affects these organs as well. Also, the gallbladder is linked to courage, judgment, and decision-making. When the liver and gallbladder fall out of harmony, emotional stability falls apart. Anger and resentment rise more easily, and the physical strain spreads throughout the body. Both ancient and modern perspectives point toward the same idea. Unmanaged anger disrupts the balance that keeps the mind and body healthy. Modern psychology explains anger as a reaction that arises when someone feels provoked or blocked from reaching a goal. And because anger can influence decision-making in seconds, researchers have spent years studying how to weaken it or address it. One answer that stands out is humility. In 2020, a team of scientists explored how humility affects anger and aggression. Participants were asked to recall a moment that made them feel humble and write about it for two minutes. Only then were they given scenarios designed to provoke anger, like someone speeding up when they try to pass or blocking traffic by parking slowly. And the results show that humility softened reactions. It lowered the urge to snap back, it made anger slower, weaker, and also easier to control. Research also shows that humility grows when gratitude and awe grow. Emotions that widen perspective, like empathy and appreciation, naturally weaken anger. Think of it this way, when your mind or heart expands out, anger can't fill the space. And sometimes you learn the hard way. Let me tell you about something that happened to me. I was stuck behind a car going super slow. They put on the brakes every few seconds, and they were going at least 10 miles under the speed limit. I couldn't pass, and with each minute, I could feel my frustration building. Eventually, I really did get angry. My jaw clenched, and I started imagining what I would say to this person. Finally, the road opened up, and I passed him. I looked over, and there he was, an old man 
both hands on the wheel, looking straight ahead with complete concentration. As I passed him, he looked over and gave me a small wave, just a gentle, polite acknowledgement. And just like that, my anger lifted. He wasn't being inconsiderate, he was being careful. Maybe his reflexes weren't what they used to be. Maybe he was nervous or maybe he was doing the best he could. I didn't need to know the whole story, but the simple act of thinking of different possibilities was enough. And this is what psychologists call cognitive reappraisal. But really, it's just giving people the benefit of the doubt. Because most of the time, the person frustrating you isn't trying to. They're just trying to live their life, doing their best, and dealing with things that you can't see from your perspective. And the moment you imagine other possibilities, anger flies away. Also, managing anger shouldn't mean suppressing it. Holding it in for too long can create other health issues. And venting is not the right answer either. You might have seen those rage rooms where you can hit objects or break things. But recent studies show these do not reduce anger and aggression, but can actually make it worse. Although we can feel good in the short term, it may condition the body and mind to accept that kind of behavior. Not surprisingly, mind-body practices also help with anger. Breathing exercises, tai chi, qigong, yoga, and mindfulness reduce stress and calm the nervous system. The idea behind all of this is simple. The flames of anger get smaller when the body is calm and the mind has room to think. And with clarity comes control. John Hunter spent his life saving others, but he couldn't save himself from the one thing he knew was killing him. He understood the cost. But knowing and doing are two different things. His story teaches that anger isn't the enemy. The price we pay for ignoring it is. Because every time anger rises, your body keeps score. Your heart remembers. Your blood vessels remember. And over time, those moments stack up in ways you can't see until the damage is already there. But you have control. The next time anger rises, pause just for a moment. Notice what it's trying to tell you. Then choose how much of yourself you're willing to give it. Because anger will show up, that's inevitable. But how long it stays and how much it takes from you, that's up to you. If this video gave you a new understanding of anger, share with someone who might benefit from seeing it the same way. Sometimes the right information at the right moment makes a real difference. And if you want content like this that explains the science behind the mind and body in a way that actually makes you think, hit like and subscribe.